Hi everyone, I wanted to talk a bit about weight loss and insulin because I think this is something that everyone should know who's trying to actually control their weight. So sugar and carbohydrates, well there's different kinds, but essentially when you eat something that's high in sugar and low in fiber, it will go down to your stomach, right? and it'll basically feed into your bloodstream. One gram of sugar in your bloodstream, and yeah, you're um, gonna have a very bad day. So, what the body does is it does something very, very cool. It releases insulin, and the insulin will basically make the sugar go away as quickly as possible. It will go to three different places, which is your muscles, your liver, and your adipose tissue, which is your fat, okay? The other thing that insulin does, which not many people seem to know about, is it actually blocks your fat from going back into your bloodstream and giving you a sort of extra boost of energy, right? I, I guess from an evolutionary perspective, this kind of makes sense, right? If you've got loads and loads of sugary food, right, in a sort of hunter-gatherer world, it generally means that it's summer or spring, and there's loads of food around, there's fruit all over the trees, you know, fruit and honey everywhere. You know, sugar was actually quite rare, but when you did get sugar, it tasted so good, because honestly, this is a really good source of fuel for the human body. The problem is, nowadays, it's always spring and summer. So we've always got access to loads and loads of sugary products. So if you're trying to control your weight or if you're trying to lose weight, you really need to eat foods which don't spike your blood sugar. Now what happens, as you guys may have noticed if you've eaten like a, a Chinese, for example, is your blood sugar will spike very, very, very quickly and then a lot of insulin will be released to counteract the effect and then your blood sugar will crash and then you will all of a sudden feel very very hungry like you really want to eat something and you'll probably end up eating more sugar and in the end you end up with a sort of vicious cycle how can you avoid this if you actually eat fiber with your sugar so instead of eating a chocolate bar for example or drinking a fizzy drink or orange juice or something if you actually eat a um, apple for example that's got fiber and the fiber will actually slow down your stomach um, getting the um, sugar into your bloodstream and that will give you um, a less severe sort of reaction with your glucose and your insulin be a lot better you know you won't get the same sort of blood sugar spike so anything with fiber in it is um, gonna make sugary things a lot healthier the other thing you could do is change your diet so you could eat more protein or you could eat more fat we're very, very kind of fat phobic these days. Um, when I go to Spain, you quite often see meat, and a lot of the fat is sort of left on the meat. And, you know, in the United Kingdom, we don't really see that. You know, we like our meat sort of shaven. We might get a bit of crackling if it's pork or something. But generally speaking, we don't like seeing fat because we think that fat will make you fat. It's true, but fat has twice as many calories as carbohydrate. But that's only half the story because fat will satiate you for hours, okay? If you eat a low sugar diet and you eat something that contains protein and fat, then you'll be satiated for three, four hours maybe. And overall, you may even eat less than if you're eating um, constant sugary stuff. And of course, we should probably mention diabetes. If you're constantly um, on this roller coaster, of um, eating carbohydrates all the time and then crashing this can actually cause damage to your body and you can start to become insulin resistant which is what type 2 diabetes and you know you don't want to go there really. you know this is some um, stuff really everyone should know so the two points about insulin just to reiterate very quickly is if you um eat a load of sugar and you spike your insulin then that will get stored most of it as fat okay because your body's got to get rid of it because one gram of sugar will kill you so you need to get rid of that sugar asap and the easiest place to get rid of it is to stick it in your fat deposits right and that's one of the reasons why people become fat and the other thing is secondly the insulin will block your body's ability to convert fat into energy
if you go on a fast, for example, and you don't eat anything, you'll be fine because your fat will be turned into energy. But if you have some carbohydrates, even just um, some, right, that can actually block your fat from being converted to energy. This will make you very, very, very hungry and probably quite lethargic. So it's just best to avoid carbs where possible. If you want to lose weight or, you know, just generally speaking, eat them in moderation and eat them with fibre. So, oh, there is one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, okay? So, some fats are not too healthy, but other fats are really healthy for you, okay? And I just really wanted to go over a few sources of healthy fats that you can actually enjoy, right? We've got full fat yoghurt, okay? Yoghurt's great, it's, you know, dairy obviously. Um, you don't even have to have um, like dairy yogurt if you don't want, but just go for a full fat yogurt that's low in sugar. Coconut and coconut oil. So again, coconuts um, can be a bit hard to eat, but nevertheless, if you um, chop some coconut up and have a small amount, it can be great. Um, and coconut oil, again, you can um, buy that stuff and you can use it on a lot of other dishes and stuff. Extra virgin olive oil is um, great, it contains polyethanols, I think, so that's kind of um, a pretty good antioxidant. It's also very good for cardiovascular health. Chia seeds, again, again all the rage, um, they've got quite a lot of omega-3 fatty acids um, called ALA. They're not quite as good as fish, but nevertheless, um, just go crazy. Um, nuts in general are very, very healthy. Um, peanuts are okay eaten in moderation, but bear in mind a lot of peanuts have got quite a lot of salt, and salt isn't bad, but too much salt can be bad for you, but that being said, you should have some salt in the summer, okay? Not too much, but don't do a low sodium diet, it can actually kill you. There was a doctor a few years ago I heard about who put all his patients on a low salt diet, and um, a lot of them died because um, they couldn't cope with heat, so moderate amounts of salt. Um, but yeah, generally nuts are very, very, very healthy. People who eat more nuts tend to live longer. Fatty fish, right? So we're talking about um, salmon, trout, mackerel, sardines, herring, that sort of thing. Great source of fats. Really, really good omega threes, EPA, DHA. Really good for your brain, cardiovascular health. Um, it also contains a good source of vitamin D. So yeah, fatty fish is actually amazing for your health. Whole eggs, okay. Um, there's a lot of controversy surrounding eggs. You know, you might read in a newspaper, but um, oh, we shouldn't eat eggs. And the next day, it will say eggs are amazing for you. Okay, so some people kind of think that cholesterol's really bad for you. Other people kind of theorize that maybe it's not so bad for you. Actually, people with higher cholesterol, actually, maybe the higher cholesterol is actually helping their body deal with some of the damage that's being done to it by inflammation. And inflammation's really, really terrible for you. Anyway, eggs eaten in moderation are a great source of healthy fats. Dark chocolate. Now, okay, to be honest, dark chocolate is good, but... Again, eat in moderation because if I eat dark chocolate, I just gain weight like crazy, okay? And it's not even the quantity, but nevertheless, dark chocolate's got all kinds of healthy stuff in it. Like, for example, it's got some, um, it can reduce your LDL cholesterol levels, which can help lower blood pressure. It, it can do all kinds of um, great things for you. And if you're not a huge fan of dark chocolate, I go for a 70% dark chocolate because it's you know, still quite sweet and, um, you know, you still get some of the benefits. Again, cheese, it's very nutritious, it's kind of a bit addictive. I personally love a bit of cheese now and again, and it won't spike your, spike your blood sugar. Uh, it also contains some um, lactase and things, which uh, I, th I think it gets converted to tryptophan, which can help you sleep at night. So, you know, take some cheese before you go to bed, it will help you sleep. And contrary to actually what people say, cheese can actually give you happier dreams. It doesn't necessarily cause nightmares, but it will cause happier dreams. And number one, of course, is avocados. Avocados are obviously great and healthy. There's lots of good reasons why you should have um, an avocado occasionally. Not so good for the environment. I was sort of reading this off the list, but um, I'm going to add bananas in here because I freaking love bananas and they're a great source of healthy fats too. And, you know, interesting fact, Gordon Brown, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, ate about eight bananas every single day, okay? 
So he was a prime minister. I guess they can't be that bad. I really hope you hope you don't mind this supplementary, but one of the problems I hear when people say fat is they think, well, what can I actually eat that's high in fat? Well, maybe now you know. That's all I want to say for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, I've got a lot more to say about diet and insulin and that sort of thing. Yeah, please just uh, leave a comment, leave a like, or subscribe, or you can even go to my Patreon if you really want to. That would be amazing, but it's entirely up to you guys. Anyway, I will be bringing out more videos in the future about similar topics to this because, like I say, I've got a lot more to say. But I'm going to leave it there for now. So, thank you very much. See you guys soon, and uh, happy eating!